Welcome to another episode of Honky Outdoors. It is just before 5 a.m. I um, managed to got myself a week's worth of work down the coast, so we're getting in some, getting in some spear fishing, getting in some diving. Hopefully, find some abalone. Really hoping we find some abalone, and maybe even some mud crabs or some Australian bass. So let's get into it. So it turns out one of my co-workers, Dan, is actually a keen Spiro as well and he put me straight onto this spot to head to after work. I told him I was chasing abalone and he reckoned I was in with a pretty good shot in this spot. It was a sweltering afternoon at the coast and about 30 to 35 degrees Celsius. The water temp was expected to be around 24, 25 Celsius which was very tropical for this part of the world. I felt pretty spoiled, this was some of the best visibility I've seen in my spearfishing time and I've seen everything from eels, different fish, coming up on different urchins under cracks and thought I'd grab a couple of those as well. I was really keen to finally find an abalone so I got to work and started scouring rocks, bases of weeds and likely spots of just seeing other people find them in different videos and from some advice I'd received from Uncle Mott. Mott Reed, thanks mate. Unfortunately, I didn't manage to find any on this day. Despite the water being clearer than I was used to and the conditions being, as far as I could tell, pretty decent, I hadn't actually seen a lot of fish in this spot, which I found unusual. And then I finally found a school full of mini pot of red marijuana come through. And I took a sort of fleeting shot at this one and just missed it. Because of the general lack of fish I was seeing, I decided to take things a step further and crush up some of these old black urchins and just see if I could, what was about, what I could entice in. Then I decided to grab one and actually crack it properly and just spread everything as far as I could rather than just crushing it on one rock. And this is how that went down. As you can see the insides of these ones, the rows are all like really thick and clumpy and I doubt that's any good, but these small fish just pounced on it straight away, started going nuts over it. I wasn't ready for what happened next though and I somehow managed to miss it on film, but a school of fish were sort of pushing the shells of that urchin around, pushing into a corner, and as they hit into a big rock, a big moray eel come out and started chasing away all the fish from the urchin so he could take it for himself and then I saw a little cray skip over the rock and I thought I was seeing things so I dove down and anyways yep fair enough there he is hiding right there I developed a very amateur plan and come, did a breathe up come back down 
part of the way, the crayweed. There's his antennas there. Pounce at him. And he was way too quick for me. <laughs> My GoPro battery died sometime after that and I shot this nice pike just so I was getting out of the water. Well, that was a bloody awesome dive. Watching that sunset now. Well, um, that was fun. This is a good new spot. Thanks, Dan. Yeah, so going to go pick up some sushi stuff, some snacks for tonight, have a feed, hit the hay early because I'm going to be up again early for work tomorrow. I was back at the motel, I started doing the necessary preparations for the stinky pike to turn into sashimi when I got home. If you head over to www.honkyoutdoors.com, you can grab yourself a copy of the 99 Spiro Recipes book, which has my stinky pike sashimi recipe in it, so you can see what I do with this. Rob's going to show us how to catch a cray today. <laughs> <laughs> if we find one. Yeah. <laughs> We've um, come at the lowest tide of the year by the look of it. Lowest tide of the century, I think. Yeah. So, um, go scrape across some rocks and get into it. Just walk, Just walk through it. <laughs> Just that broom you shot at, was it? No. I shot at a big flatty as soon as we got in. Oh, sh**. <laughs> Tore right out. I uh, tried to start across here. Bloody hell. I don't know where he is, but he's not healthy. I'll keep an eye out then. Oh, yeah, it's a good one. Like As you can see, even though it was low tide, we were blessed with some pretty clear viz. And there was a few cracking red mowong cracking around this spot. I'll just try to develop a plan of attack. And then I saw this larger bodied blackfish. I'm not actually sure what species it was and which is why I held off on the trigger. Then I found this leather jacket and took a quick shot. It wasn't until I looked back at the footage that I realised it was actually two of them there. 
I finally managed to get down on the level with one of these red mobile and the safety was on and ruined my only chance for the day. Two big ones there. I'll, I can have a look. But now the time had come for Rob to show me how to find abalone. And as you can see to the untrained eye, these things are near impossible to spot. We got him. <laughs> Took it. <laughs> Every time I get an ad, I don't you know. <laughs> What I didn't sign up for was Rob's crash course in bombing riding which involved hanging on to cray weed as the current ripped you 180 degrees each way on a whim and to top it all that we saw some lightning in the water and decided it was probably time to get out. What do you reckon? Yeah, that lightning was a bit sketchy. Yeah, it's gonna be hairy. I don't want to get struck by lightning and water. Oh, straight my knife. <laughs> well, that was good dying. Rob delivered. He showed us where the abs live. <laughs> <laughs> Not here, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, saw saw some red moeys, blue groper, big flatty, big flatty. A couple of big rays too, wouldn't they? Yeah, a couple of those big bat rays or whatever they are. Juvenile snapper. Yeah. No, no crayfish. No crayfish. Not that we didn't look. <laughs> well, you looked. <laughs> <laughs> right, thanks Rob. No worries, mate. I'll um, try not to burn your nachos next time I put them. <laughs> <laughs> right, <I'm> good. <laughs> It's nice not to be walking back out in the dark too. Yeah, sure. I almost, almost put a head torch in. <laughs> If you spoke to my wife, she'd tell you that's a smart move. Right. <laughs> Out here with Nick today. Trying to catch some three meteries. <laughs> ah, yes, yes. Looks like this got me. So, uh, I just cast out there and lost. A nice flooding, I think. He spat the hook just here somewhere. And now Nick's decided to fish there for some reason. <laughs> Nick, with the little soapy. That's so cool. I haven't ever seen an alive Jewfish, ever. Okay. What What's a Jewfish? Oh, no way. Look at the colours on it. He swam off pretty good.
2.1. Actually, how long is that? Yeah, that would. I'm thinking this is sketchy enough and dongs. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <gasps> no way! We got a mud crab, baby! Get a load of that! Oh, that's so good. I was like, for sure that's going to have nothing in it. <laughs> that's a bloody amazing. That's so cool. What's that? It's an egg. Snake egg. Give that a good shot, Chris. Hey. I didn't know the creek was, I was blindly aiming for the creek this morning because the water you was up. You did a good in. job. Not a minute. What have we got? Righto. Mud crab number two. What have we got? Zilch. Emperor tea. Damn. Nothing left in the can. Oh well. Come back tomorrow. Might as well. Is that possible or will it run away? <laughs> they have a tendency to pick up knives. <laughs> <laughs> They'll fight you. <laughs> Oh, 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 Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> like, have, like, some sort of <laughs> <laughs> you think so? <laughs> oh yeah, I've got a mushroom here. <laughs> Can't forget the mushroom. <laughs> we did half regular fire. No, we did one fully on it. This was I followed a recipe. I even posted it into the group and got some validation. So. You'd see. What do they taste like? I have no idea. I was pretty sure I found one before, but I didn't know enough about it. So I like yeah. it left. Fresh to pass. <laughs> I'm not 
Cheesy enough. Yeah. Cheesy. <laughs> yeah. We do not know you're not. Right in with the abalone. Oh, I'm so hungry now. <laughs> yeah, now that we can smell it, as soon as you put that garlic butter in the pan, yeah. I, I think I wasn't actually that hungry, but then once the garlic butter went yeah, in, I was, I was like, all right. <laughs> Watch out for the broccolini. <laughs> <laughs> Down the bottom. You just have to hold the curry in there. <laughs> I've gone to warm. That's a good as bunch as any. <laughs> Yeah, the um, like real flat leaf pasta. Oh, uh, yes. Parsley. Parsley. Pasta. <laughs> It'd be nice for you to go pasta, but um, you know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. This curly leaf was just over there in the veggie garden, and I found it being overtaken by weeds. So I yeah. was like, oh, I'll just claim one of those for myself. And he's done all right. I didn't think it would come back. But... Cool. Yeah. Well done. You're eventually welcome. <laughs> Pasta. You. So where do you find abalone? Are they like, are they like oysters and they just grow on the rocks or are they quite deep? Uh, yes. <laughs> they can be in a they can be in a foot of water or they could be in 10 meters of water but they're always sort of ocean side normally where it's pretty rough yeah and um, they just sort of cling up but they can like unlodge themselves and move slowly but yeah because normally they like live in cracks where they're safe from predators but like every time there's a big storm, those cracks will fill up again, like new ones will get washed in there sort of thing. Nice. What do you think, Nick? <laughs> you have an abalone as well? Yeah, it's pretty nice. Mm. Pretty nice. Abalone? No. Mm, and you've got it? So good. I good. had mine as my first nice. before I mixed it in. <laughs> Maloning yeah. helps everyone. It helps. <laughs> <laughs> Do you need something to crack into that? Yes. Yeah. I will. <laughs> <laughs> Surely they would crush it up and use it. Do they do similar to like the wine for our oyster shells? You could do. Bit of crab juice. There we go. Crab claw meat. Finally. <laughs> <laughs> we got in there. Really <laughs> good. That was so delicious. <laughs> It's literally <laughs> like teeth in its jaws. Yeah, we were just saying that it's almost like molars, like on the back yeah. of its mouth as you see. Bolt cutters. I will just finger. Mm. Being gifted the claw. <laughs> Thanks, Nate. <laughs> 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 
the aftermath. One last prawn. They slide nice across the table too. <laughs> I don't know if that's actually a trade of a glass or not, but... <laughs> That's good stuff. Just like, it's that hit of like smoke and you're expecting it to have like that real punch in the face thing, but it's just smooth. <laughs> yeah. 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 Port Charlotte, my Brooklady.